morning everybody good morning good morning good morning good morning good morning moaning youtubers moaning podcast listeners welcome to coffee moaning and if this is your first time coming over here because you've just been chatting with me on instagram welcome to the family give us a wave if this is your first time visiting coffee moaning which runs monday to saturday Every day. Sometimes we do wine o'clock on a Friday. That's going to become more of a regular thing, actually, wine o'clock on a Friday. It didn't happen last Friday. Though. It didn't it's happen last Friday. Um, but, um, can yeah. I just say, Edward Bevington's just said, though, I was just commenting on the thumbnail, which our lovely Michelle does, and he said, odd picture in the middle, which was of a woman with her hand on her. That's forgetfulness. But it does look a little bit like she's been hit in the eye with a seagull poo. Lovely photos, well Michelle, done, Michelle, if you're there. Um, but, yeah, no, we're talking about forgetfulness. What are we talking about this morning? Uh, we're going to... We're going to talk about should we feel shame over past TV shows? And I think there's a couple of angles on this. One, your dad was in some of the shows that I think we would widely consider to be inappropriate, politically incorrect. Well, I, I did a pilot for the very people that we're talking about. Right, well, we'll talk about that Saucy in a bit. So nurse. should we feel shame over past TV shows? Paul Mescal, you know, who doesn't love Paul Mescal? Bless him. The more he says he doesn't want fame, the more famous he becomes. <laughs> but does everybody know him? I mean, isn't well, he still quite niche? Well, explain who he is then, next. Well, if you saw the series Normal People, he was the absolute divine hunk in that. And um, I would say Sunburn, but it's not Sunburn. What's the film? After Sun. After Sun. For which, which he was nominated for an Oscar. Love. Same year we were longlisted. It would have been nice to have hung yeah, out with him. Yeah, we would have just hung yeah. out, wouldn't we? Mind you, he'd have fallen in love with me and then that would have been it. He might have fallen I'd in love with me. I'd have given him a slice of my pavlova and he would be mine. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but, but, he will cut, but he can't film your butt like I do. Uh, that's weird. Um. <laughs> if that seems extremely random, I'm so sorry. This is my husband, Mark, and he says I things that about? are extremely random sometimes. What he's talking about is my bum in the, our family reality show. Well, that still time. sounds even worse. <laughs> uh, and we're also going to talk about something that we forgot to talk about yesterday, which is how to fight forgetfulness. forgetfulness. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't actually. We knocked it off the list. But... Um, we know him, We says forgot Wonder to Woman. leave enough time to talk about it. Yes, we did. So does everybody know him? Anyway, he is, he is, he's a wonderful actor. Very understated, isn't he? When I remember when I first started watching Normal People, because I read the book first and I loved it, which is always a bit of a disaster, isn't it, if you read something mm. and then you watch it. And I was a bit like, ooh, I don't know about him. Because it was his first... Oh, the other film that I really liked with him in, that very slow one in Greece... He just had a small Very part. Very small part. Oh, the... He was in it. Something... Da Lost Daughter, was it? Yeah. Lost Daughter. With um, Olivia Charlotte Coleman. Coleman. Olivia Coleman. Yeah. Um, but, and when he was first in it, I was like, oh, because I, I knew he hadn't acted before. He was found as a non-actor, wasn't mm -hmm. he? Mm -hmm. And I was a bit... But my God, in the end, he was fantastic. Very understated. Very unshowy. He was really in his character. And I think that leads us to where he is... Yeah, so he, 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 he's, feeling at the yeah, he's talking about his fear of fame. He's soon to be seen in the new Gladiator movie. So we're going to talk about that. Careful what you wish for. And can you be an actor and not want fame? I'm curious to ask that question. Of course. Yeah, no, 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 that's a good question, though. Uh, how to fight forgetfulness. And there was something else which I just found a minute ago. Uh, yeah, we might talk about uh, Michael Morpurgo uh, talking about... I think it's always important to give a shout out to reading... Uh, um, oh no no we're not we're going to talk about dopamine hacking I want to I want to talk about this briefly I know Nadia you weren't so convinced well it's only because we've got ADHD dopamine so we are fasting. starving of do dopamine we want more dopamine we no, don't exactly. know not have dopamine okay so there's this new possible kind of mental health hack happiness hack which is called dopamine fasting which isn't too complicated a thought so anyway yeah, but so, it's like a dopamine overuse isn't it well let's talk about fame should we talk okay let me ask let's start with a question here and whilst I ask this poll question, Ads, when did you discover you were famous? Um, within weeks of being on EastEnders, because you film EastEnders six weeks ahead. Yeah. So you're kind of in the bubble then, and you don't, you think, oh, this is all right. You know, I mean, I wanted to be famous. Oh, I did right. want to be famous. Oh, okay. I think I was very much the middle child. I love to be the centre of attention. I am a show off. Um, oh. And I wanted. You know, that's that's part of what I wanted. I loved acting, but part of what I wanted was to be famous. Right. That is not the case for all actors. Absolutely. I know people don't believe that, but that is true. A, a fame can come along with success. Mm. But then when I became famous mm. on EastEnders, 
the famous is. I wasn't famous, but you know, famous within our. No, country. but to clarify for anyone who doesn't know, when you were in it, we were looking at staggering numbers. It hadn't become this sort of atrociously scripted piece of. No, it's it so much better now. No. It is so much. No, you don't know because the new guys take notes. It's fantastic, right. but um, 18 million, 20 million viewers oh, wow. at that time. So it was, it was insane. And I went into it when it was at its, it, one of its absolute peaks, oh, wow. I think. Wow. So, um, so you, I really did. Within weeks of it coming out, the first episode, I mm. was being recognised everywhere. Wow. So it was very fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and, and it very was big intense. numbers, though, wasn't it? I mean, we were looking at sort of... I mean, back in the day, it was like, was it 20 million for the 18, Dirty Den or something million. and all that kind of Maybe stuff? Maybe 20 million was the highest. I think it was about 18. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. It was up of a lot of people yeah and it was fame and and some of it i really enjoyed some of it i absolutely hated and found terrifying what part of it did you enjoy i think initially that hit of what i wanted which was to be recognized, recognized. and for yeah. people to think i was good at something because i'd yeah I, I didn't i didn't really feel like i'd been particularly good at any i, I don't know i don't know i suppose People liking you, people giving you that attention. Yeah, yeah. But very quickly, I realised that it was all hollow. Right. The, the, not all of it, but some of it was really hollow because mm. I was playing this really nasty character. And so it was very odd the way people re responded with me. And sometimes it was really difficult and really unpleasant. Mm. So I was really lucky that I came out of that and I went into Loose Women and then I was mm. I was a Loose Woman and I was Nadia. So I never but carried my character's name in the way that other people did. So it was funny, Dina and I were doing an interview yesterday and um, the journalist said to her, what is, what is, um, what's it like when, you know, Nadia gets recognised yeah, yeah. out and about? And she said, I was really surprised what she said, actually. It was really nice. She goes, well, it's not like you think. She said she just like, because people think they know her. It's not like, oh, she's famous. They go, oh, hello, Nadia. And she goes, oh, hello. And she, goes, mm. and she says hello to every single person. And she's nice to every single person. And it's not like a big, it's not like if you're a star, like a movie star. And what did people she like, say? Oh, oh. No, that's what she said about oh, me. I what? thought it was really sweet. That you say hello to everyone? Well, she just oh, said... Oh, I thought she was going to say how she finds it really annoying. No, no, she doesn't find it annoying at all. Oh. She said because people just talk to me like they know me. It's like, oh, hello, Nadia. So it's not like blowing smoke up my ass and going, oh, my God. Oh, I see. Oh, my God, it's you. Right, right. You're so brilliant, which is awkward. You feel embarrassed. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah, just yeah. like, oh, hello, and really like chatty with me. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, someone here has just said, um, surely it must be... quick. I'm sure becoming famous happens faster what with social media now, says Reem A.W. I suppose well, this is what he's talking about he, yeah. he, in this article. He says, you know, I find it really scary that social media numbers are now being taken into account when casting. Mm. And he's right, because that absolutely should not be the case. That's certainly the case on television, in all sorts of things. But to play social media numbers do make a difference. But to play devil's advocate, social media numbers can make a difference for everyone. People like us, people run businesses of acting. social media. No, no, well, I No, don't, I don't think no. it should. No, no, because... Not in terms of casting it, decisions. You, well, that's what he's talking about. It's like, would you have a lesser actor who, because they've got big numbers, but what I would say is the movie business is a business. Well, th that's precisely, you've kind of jumped in on yeah. my, where I was coming at it from. My uh, approach on whether casting and decisions on casting and decisions should be around social media numbers, I think I've always, been a, I've always been a proponent of the fact that indie, niche, esoteric films that aren't seen by many, that are great places for actors to cut their teeth, find their feet and, and devise their sort of skill set... Um, those are only sustainable if you've got the bigger films that are carrying, doing all the heavy lifting. So you've got the blockbusters and everything else. Mm. They drive bums on seats and it means that you can mm. get a screen. In and say, Yeah, but I would argue that the same process is at work around finding those stars mm. that do have big numbers. Yeah. Because it's not always that. It's not like every actor is cast exactly. based on numbers. I just think actors get insecure. I remember somebody that I know that was very well known from the telly mm. was put into a play and this person was was good enough. I went mm. to see it, she was good enough. But the actors were so angry that she was brought in because she wasn't the best actress in the world right. for the part. But right. 
those bums would not have been on those seats. So there is there is a bit of a shift back. It's a business. Forth. But basically, mostly what he's talking about is he's really scared of being famous. Well, I he love this. He doesn't want the fame. I love this. And if you... that intrusive fame must be awful. Yeah, absolutely. And he does talk about because, of course, he's soon to be seen in Ridley Scott's follow up to Gladiator, which I have to confess, I was supremely excited about until I saw Napoleon and House of Gucci. And now I'm really profoundly worried. And I think probably <laughs> half the cast are, too. He's in it, obviously, alongside Pedro Pascal. Scow, who I think is an interesting, love. yeah, who I think is an interesting I counterpoint because Pedro has become so famous, but likewise has a discomfort with the level of fame proportionate to what he gets from the job. But what I like about him is he he really feel he doesn't like the fame because he doesn't like the extended adoration. Exactly. I think to be appreciated, but to be treated like a yeah. god. Yeah. You know, like my dad, you know, he's an actor and he always used to say when we were growing up, you know, and he, you know, he's a jobbing actor. He wasn't like huge fame or anything. But he would say, you know, they go to like parties because in the 70s people had parties and yeah, they'd no, stand around and yeah. drink wine and chat. And he said, you know, if the excitement that people would get if I said I was an actor, and he said, and want to talk to me, he said, but there might be a neurosurgeon standing next to me and people would go, oh, you know, <laughs> just like, and he, he always thought that that was. And the other thing is, I think if you're famous, people never assume that they have anything interesting to say to the famous person. And yet they only really want None to... of their life is interesting. Yeah, but also, yet they only is... really want to talk to the famous person. But what often happens is people don't know what to say. Yeah, and so I think as well, people, very famous people feel like they lose that connection yeah, with yeah, people. Yeah. And I assume the sort of actor he is, he doesn't want to be in the ivory tower of like... But I think it's an interesting question to ask about whether all act... To become an actor, is it about becoming famous? It's like to become an artist. You want someone to see your work. You need people to see your of work. It's about, it's about why you want people to see your work. Is it about... You, becoming you becoming the star or is it about the work and I think you do get actors who want the work I was interviewing an actress the other day I don't want to name it yet but I was inter interviewing an actress the other day and for a film and she was Fantastic really actress. interesting about how she admitted that in the early days she loved the attention and she yeah. wanted to be liked by every single and I would audience. never think of it of that actress no I and then she said what she's loving in her later years is the ability to be hated and despised <laughs> And she said, I feel, and she said, and what was interesting, even at her age, she said, she said, really, but you see, by and large, she said, I'm, I carry over the idea that most people think of actors as, it's like, it's a fine line between acting and prostitution. You see, so many oh. people have such a low, they, they are drawn to it and they're fascinated by it. But she said, I'm still met by people who dismiss it yes. as kind of not important. Yes. And, 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 you know, it's like so many things, isn't it? And the thing to remember that 90 Eight, 96% of actors live a very difficult life. Yeah. It's appallingly paid unless people are megastars. It's really, honestly, really badly paid. And then there might be a job that they get that's good. Mm. But then they might not get one for another year. Yeah. So it, you, it's a real, you have to really want it. Yeah. to be a serious actor who loves their craft and their art and that. But on that note, we're going to see the... We're, we're going to the premiere of All of Us Strangers next week, which has Paul Mescal and Andrew Scott on it. Very excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a funny part of this article about the fame that may come his way with Gladiator 2 and he like he says he may have to do some kind of really obscure play off the back of it because he just doesn't want it. It doesn't want it. He doesn't want it to go any more than than what it is now. Um, but he, there was talk in this, about, Russell Crowe was asked recently about, you know, whether he'd been approached or talked to or whether the producers on the Gladiator 2 had spoken to, whether Paul Mescal had approached him about how to do it. And like he said, he said, no, I'm dead. My character's dead. I haven't been asked anything. But he did say this, which I thought was great for Russell Crowe. He said, they should be fucking paying me for the amount of questions, though, I'm being asked about a film I'm not even in. It's got nothing to do with me. In his world, I'm dead, six feet under. But I do admit, and this is interesting, I do admit to a certain tinge of jealousy because it reminds me of when I was younger Aww. and what it meant for me in my life because it really was Russell Crowe's moment. Yeah. But I think there's something in that, be careful what you wish for because yeah. sometimes the getting to a place is the bit, yes. is the best it's bit. It's all the journey. And it, it's like, I was trying to avoid the word journey. It's all, but it is always but the journey. It, it, well, not always, but mm. often... It's, it's, it's that staying in the moment with each little triumph that you have, isn't it? Mm. Like, I'm sure you know, like when people, I remember when me and my sister ran markets, you know, and it was like, oh my God, selling that first thing for a fiver was the mm. most unbelievable feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like insane. Yeah. Obviously, we never really improved much. We, we were 
so funny when we were doing this interview yesterday we were talking about how we were the worst entrepreneurs <laughs> we had about 20 different start-up businesses we never gave up um but we we loved it we loved the chase so being an entrepreneurial and setting up your own little kind of cookery show yeah, but well, that's what, that's what happened. In the interview, we went, oh, my God, and here we are. The one thing we never thought to do was do food, and that's our thing. Yeah, We've been sitting in markets with our painted pots going, look at them over there, they're absolutely coin in it. And look, just selling sandwiches, and there'd be a long queue. Never did we go, why don't we have a food store? <laughs> like yesterday. Hi, and Jill now Taylor. we do it with curly cook. So funny, isn't it? How you can get to where you and where here we are in to. our 60th year, finally stumbled upon what it is. There you go. Um, well, before we forget, let's not forget how to stop forgetting. So this is a piece that you found, Mads, about um, the science of why we lose stuff and forget stuff and simple ways to boost your brain power, si simple strategies. Let's do a little poll. Who here, find, oh, let's have a look at the answer Who here. here when Would you like to be famous? Oh, vast majority say no, Yes, 85%. I think people yeah. have much Good. more of an understanding of what it yeah, means yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is picked over. Every single thing you do or have done in the past can be brought to you. You can be, you know, you just, you, you vulner, it's a vulnerable thing to, yeah. be, to be famous. You're not gonna believe it. I wouldn't I, like it. I'd forgotten what my poll question was. Are you forgetful? <laughs> no, no, I think the good question is, no. do it's you gone. panic when you forget? Because I think that's okay. what so many of us do, don't we? We just go into this like, God, what's wrong with us? I'm stupid, or I've got dementia, or I've got early onset Alzheimer's. The thing is, there are so many articles about Alzheimer's and dementia these days, which in one way, of course, is very good. Awareness is good. But in another, I think if you suffer from any kind of health anxiety... And you know that little baby algorithm, you click on something and it just keeps showing it. And Georgina, you know that I... Georgina McMahon just on that says, oh yes, I usually miss this life. Hello from Ireland. Hi, Georgina. Hi, Georgina. Uh, fellow ADHD person, I'm so used to forgetting. Right. Can I just quickly ask before you jump in with... with, yeah, with the, no, 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 because I, I, you know this article better than me. But is a symptom, it, is a nicer way of looking at the ADHD forgetfulness, more one of... It's the collision and overlapping of so many things that eclipses. So, in fact, you're actually remembering too much. Well, yeah. I mean, my ADHD coach, she was great on that. She said, don't knock yourself so much because you're probably doing 20 more things at the same time that somebody else wouldn't be doing. That's yeah. the trouble, isn't it? You jump from one thing to another to stay with something is actually very hard. Right. Um, but also because the dyslexic trait you can have does affect your short-term memory. Mm. There's so many comorbidities with ADHD and all kinds of bloody things. But there you go. But I've, I've never had a great memory. When I go back to when I was a kid, mm. that short-term memory, which I think plays a big part in my problem with numbers and maths. and right. Because that, those holding those numbers is just very difficult for me. So, so sorry, I, had to, I just had to find the article because I can't, you have to subscribe on the internet. But um, so, this how... article did make me feel a bit better. Yeah. Um, this because, is tip one here. Yeah. Use the cues around you. So not, this was... Not snooker cues. <laughs> <laughs> so she gives this scenario. You're right, you're ready to go. You climb to bed, uh, uh, read before shutting off the light and you realise that your reading glasses are down in the kitchen. But when you've headed downstairs and got to the kitchen, you look around and wonder, why am I here? Why am I downstairs? Now that, for me, would be like, oh my God, this is it. Right. How could, I was, and, and she said, because you're in the wrong scenario, because the kitchen is where you come for the tea, the toast, whatever. So you have to put yourself back to where you were. Mm. So you would go, so put yourself back. Where were you before you were here? Oh, you were getting into, oh yeah, you were going to turn the light on. So is this like book, classic and And you needed your reading glasses. Um, but then, you know how you always say to me, you only remember the things that you actually do care about and then your memory is very good, don't you? Yeah, I mean, quite literally, I mean, a really good demonstration of Nadia's loss of interest in something that she might be doing, saying or engaging in is, and I, I don't mean this in a, I, you know, like in a handing something to me, in your mind, you will, I'll, I'll hand you this, let me hand you this, take mm -hmm. it. So I won't let go of that act until I see you've got it. Now you hand it to me, You've let go before you've lost interest. In, you don't care whether anyone's got it. 
Thing is, that, I do this with hot drinks. You do it with everything, so you lose interest in the Am I, No, no, what you, it's not that I've lost interest. You've moved on. I've gone. Yeah. Because my brain has just gone Yeah, but somewhere. meanwhile, so is the tea all over the laptop. But I'm really, really trying to, to... And it's good. Always pull me up when I do that, because it's like... I think it's about noticing. You know, I notice that I've done that. And that helps you. But Go isn't on. this Q's idea, doesn't this lend itself to that really irritating, self-evident thing that people go when you say, I've, where have I put my keys? And someone, some smart ass goes, okay, well, where did you go when you came in? Is but it? isn't it weird? I can't find things for myself, but when you lose something, everyone says to me, where is it? Because I always find stuff. And what do I do? I track back. And that, then it is that. It's that old thing of tracking back. But that's, mm. just, that's just one um, part of it. New information in the brain only goes past working memory if something is meaningful, emotional, surprising or new. It's you, the emotional. And that's okay, this neuroscientist adds, because you don't need to remember every cup of coffee and every conversation. So that's Thank why God. you don't remember. Oh, did I have a coffee? Like, <clears throat> like the other day when I made two cups of tea, I thought, I've already made this cup of tea now, I've made a cup of tea, I've got Alzheimer's. It's not. You're just like... You're not present when you're making that cup of tea because you're thinking of the next thing you're going to do and then you come back to the other thing and then you go back to make the tea. I was making the tea and then you got two cups of tea. So um, don't be surprised when you don't remember things that don't have an emotional um, attachment. Um, the next tip attention, is paying no, attention. Yeah, yeah, attention is the golden ticket of memory. Go on. Well, it says here it's the first essential ingredient. Well, this is kind of obvious, isn't it? Which is so hard for people with ADHD. Yeah, we don't use this and then we think we've forgotten something, but it's not that we've forgotten. We never created the memory in the first place. So you've just got to pay attention. So when you do something, yeah. when you put something down, it goes back to your thing of we put things down in a in an arbitrary manner, don't we? We sort of half-hearted. We mm. it's it's a, you know so you chuck your keys. Keys is a classic because you chuck your keys down, but you just chuck your keys down. Whereas what you have, what they're saying here is. Make a decision mm. to think about it. You put them just, down. Just give a split moment. Even say it out loud. <clears throat> the amount of times I'll go upstairs, I'll put my phone, and it's so extra. I, I'm so shocked every time I go, where have I put it? Mm. And I can't track back because I had no attention to where I put it. Mm. So I've been doing that. I've been trying to just, as I go, go, oh, phone down. And also, like, all my friends, if Lee's here... They, in fact, I did it with you the other day, didn't I, Lee? Where they are so used to me. <laughs> As I've said this before, I'll say, what's name? And then I'll give like five really quick points and it's become a competition. <laughs> it's so funny. Like Jane and Kay and Lee will all go, it's da 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 And it's actually become a competition thing. They don't even know they're doing it. To be the first person to give me the name that I need, that I'm, that I'm searching for in right, my brain. Right, So the other day I was with Lee and I was trying to remember a name and he went to say it to me. I went, no, don't. Don't, because what I was doing was trying to find the emotional connection. What's the feeling that I yeah. have about this person? And it's amazing how the name comes to me. Mm. It's really weird. So say I'm looking for Paul Mescal, right, the name in my head. I might go, normal people. Now, I wanted the girls to watch that. Why did I want the girls to watch that? Because I wanted them to have a sense of what a good relationship, Paul Mescal. It's weird. Would you get to? I don't. I disagree. I don't think you'd get to Paul Mescal. I do think there's a difference in remembering. You'll remember the actor, and you'll remember. You might remember the film. You're not very good with remembering the names of things because I don't care. Exactly. And so I'm trying to retrain my brain. I'd be fascinated to, to know what makes a person. So, like for me, I mean, obviously, I find the. I mean, when I interview and when I'm talking to people, I, I'm only drawn to the emotional truth of this. Is why I love actors. I find the emotional. So I'm drawn to the emotion. But me and you are very different. You're in just, that, yeah, but you're just much. You've no, got no, a much better about, brain no, than it's me. Not a better brain. I just think I, I'm just I'm fascinated to know what makes some people drawn to the detail yeah. or drawn to the tech not the technicalities even but like you say you know the competition of finding the five Thank six you, seven eight different words that they're trying to thrust into the gap that you can't find whereas yeah okay so they're a lexicon and they're a sort of thesaurus but deep in your heart is when you when you stumble in a in a stumbly fashion across the word that might be the word and more often than not what happens with you is Everyone around you is clambering at lexicons and has thousands of words. All she ever says at the end of it is, no, it's none of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's terrible. It's none of but them. I, I really, I'm going to ask my friends really honestly, is it something that you think about? Do you think, oh, no, Nadia, she's just such a nightmare. 
Because she never remembers. Well, let's read some of these comments. Really Angela, this, they say yes. Angela Thompson, I'm holding Another this. thing she says is to write things down. Yeah, let me we'll just get to that down. quickly. Angela Thompson, I just want to read yours because it's quite, it's very moving. Um, elephants never forget, but I will. I'm crying for the life I won't have anymore. My dementia is swimming through oh. custard every day. Oh, Angela. Angela. Oh. Is that, are you talking in terms of sort of, are you being gallows humour there or are you are you talking about a diagnosis that you're, you're struggling with, sweetie? Cause I can but be... Angela, that, that again, it's like what you just said there, swimming through custard, because all the time I'm still trying to make myself feel better, but still in the back of my head I'm thinking, this is dementia, because sometimes it's like there is nothing there, mm. like literally if my child's life depended on it, I would not be able to grasp wow. that thing. And that frightens the tumbleweed. shit out of me. Total tumbleweed. Total tumbleweed. I get it every now and then. So, I, got it in, I got it in one of our travel vlogs where I just couldn't remember my pin number. And okay, that's a specific thing. I, the fear, the fear factor was Your massive. Your terror is what I have like 20, 30 times a wow, day. Wow, I don't know how you live with yourself. I don't know how you... When you sit on my face. No, when I see it in your face. Oh, when you sit on my face, I get terror I'd just then like too. to know here, I don't sit on his <laughs> no. face. <laughs> Anita Burke, my mum has short-term memory. She she can tell us stories from when she was younger, but she repeatedly asks questions she's just asked two minutes ago. But that, again, yeah, I think is that moving like on. You know, mum... And I think a lot of gaslighting around women, uh, uh, gaslighting of women by men happens, and I'll tell you why. Women are, whether we like it or not men, are multitasking emotionally so, me so much more than men are. Mm. You, know, you know, if Nadia's cooking the meal... She, if I'm cooking a meal, I'm cooking a meal. I'm not also... Helping the kids through difficult friendships, relationships, emotional highs. Like, fuck that shit. If I'm making a cake, I can only just get the fucking measurements right and I even buy the wrong butter. So, oh, Siobhan, thank you, Siobhan, said you never forget your recipes, Nadia. Yeah, no, The other no, no. day I went, no, what but do again, you mean? It's 125 grams of this, two times a And he went, how did you do that? No, but the weird thing is <laughs> she so might annoying. forget parts of her, but she doesn't forget the point of it. And I'll tell you why, because for, for Nadia, food is all emotional. It's yeah. all, it's, again, it's baked in, baked into it. It's emotional. Yeah. Dawny Harvey, what annoys me is going to switch a light on and it's already on. I quite like that. I feel like I'm quids in if a light's already... If I go to do something that's already done, I'm like, yippee, <laughs> don't need that thought. <laughs> don't need that. So, yeah, write it. Can I ask, writing it down, which is one of the recommendations here, could that not become a way of making your mind lazier? Well... No, she says oh, this. No. She goes, that's what we're always told. And that's what I've always believed. Mm. I thought, oh my God, I'm going to make myself even worse. She said, no, because we don't have those sorts of lives anymore where we just have a few things to remember. No. We've got so much going on. And Christine uh, Lampard was saying the other day on um, Loose Women, she was saying how she's got this book, but she writes everything down. See, when I go to people, how do you remember that? They always say to me, well, I've, put it, I've written it down in the diary. Mm. But I, I expect myself to remember absolutely everything. And I think I need to get one of those really big ones where I'll write everything down. I want to try all these things and see if it improves. Fair it because rather than keep moaning about it, yeah. let me see if it's anything. And if not, then I need to get my brain checked because if I have got early dementia, I need to start doing stuff about it, you know. Okay, uh, five very quick lifestyle changes that this article suggests. One, ramp up your exercise. Doing that. Two, prioritise sleep. Doing that. Three, take time to de-stress. Doing that. Four, zoom in on eating well. I'm doing that. <laughs> Five, try not to multitask. Not doing that. Not doing that. Well, you know, they're all good. That's my good, They're all good tips, aren't they? <laughs> um, so, Paul Mescal, how to find... Oh, past TV shows. Okay, let's do it. So this is a piece, Melvin Hayes, does that name mean anything to anyone? But this, Melvin Hayes was talking about, he was the star, one of the stars of a 1970s the, the sitcom, one. this one here. Oh yes, yeah. of course he was, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, of a show called It Ain't Half Hot Mum. Now who remembers that yeah, and who enjoyed it and who now feels they should be ashamed for enjoying it? Yeah, that's too complex for a poll. Oh, so. no, I was just saying on no, that. No, 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 I'm just you saying. Know, does anybody feel questions. that they loved it and, and now that they would almost not want to admit that they watched it? Mm. Because I've got really strong opinions on that. What about you? Have you? Just quickly, Angela Thompson just referencing back on that. Yes, I've been told I've got it. Oh, I've had two heart. small strokes two years ago. I'm oh, 62. yes, I remember you telling us that. My family before. noticed the summer my change. My heart is broken. Angela Thompson sending you all oh of our love, God, sweetheart. Oh, God, Angela. All of our love. It's a lot. Mm. Big, big hugs, honey. Mm. I, hope um, our, I hope our conversation didn't upset mm, you no, in any way. No. Um, 
But um, I think that you're, you sharing that like that is a very powerful thing. So I really want to thank you for that. Mm. And, mm. Um, and big hugs to you and your family. We know it's yeah. a lot. We're, yeah. all, we're all, all always here. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, bless you. Um, moving, yeah, moving on to this this topic of the, the show. Um, Vicky Waiting. Yes, I watched this when I was very young, so I can't feel guilty. I think I was seven. I was the same. I, yeah, I just remember my grandparents laughing uh, at it. I wasn't lot. seven. No, you would have oh, been a teenager. Um, 13. I was a teenager. Right, so I think it is really, really wrong to make us go back and feel ashamed for things that we enjoyed that were at a different time, mm. when everyone was enjoying. These were massive shows and just to, you know, just to clarify for anyone who doesn't know what this was this was a 1970s sitcom which was focused on a squad of british sort of soldiers uh, who were stationed in india i always thought it was during the raj but they were stationed in india during the final months of world war ii so just to give you that a call so obviously there were and, indian characters and one of the main it. actors was english not indian but he spoke fluent urdu didn't he because yes he, he, because he i think he would work with the gurkhas or fought yeah. with the gurkhas um now, sometimes when we are talking to the girls about the language we used to use, the things we used to watch, the things, they look at us with such horror. Mm. But the reason I do tell them is to say, it's not about what you did then. It's about whether you become awake to the future where things are going to get better. But at the time, you know, you can't look at us with disgust because everybody was like that. And, mm. you know, even my dad, you know, when I think of, I was talking about this the other day, wasn't it? When I think back to the racism that my dad mm. encountered as an, uh, you know, as an Arab in those times. And what he tolerated. We, we laughed it all off. Mm. We, we, you know, we, like I've said to you many times before, we thought about changing your name, taking the H out because it was so difficult for people to say and we felt bad and it's almost like, but one becomes obsequious almost mm, to, mm. to, oh, I'm so sorry. But, but I haven't got any anger about that because it was different times. Now, mm. it would be very different. But even now, if somebody makes a slip up with a joke and they genuinely say, I slipped up and I'm sorry, that is how we move forward. But if you're going to rage at people and um, accuse all the time, then we're not, we're not going to move on. Because mm. actually people retreat and get very angry and get very... So I think it's a really important part of moving forward is to say, yeah, we used to watch that, we used to enjoy that, and wow. Well, we Mal certainly wouldn't now. Put, we, I mean, you could even watch it now and still enjoy it. I'm not saying you couldn't enjoy it, but, but that certainly wouldn't get... It. Writers mm. wouldn't write that way. TV channels wouldn't commission. I just want to share what Melvin Hayes said. Melvin Hayes... Play oh, it's funny, isn't it? The characters that you do remember from these sitcoms. Yeah. Obviously, everyone remembers Warren. Is it Warren? I remember Mitchell, them all looking at yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. But Melvin Hayes' character, um, he says this of it. He's 89 or 80... Mm. Yeah, he's 89. Wow, and he says the same age as your dad. He says, when you think of some of the stuff on TV these days, it's hard to see why it ain't half hot mum is seen as too offensive to be shown. Nobody swore, there was no rudeness, and what we used to call the caution here, he, they used to call the coloured characters, which is a, a you know an outdated and awful phrase now, but they always came out on top. I feel very privileged to have been a part of it. I think... But he also says... All the people that he's met, the Indian people that he's met, well, did not get offended. But what did I just say? We weren't offended no. by stuff. So it was the very people where the offence was being targeted weren't offended because we were not awake. Mm. That's actually not all right. Mm. So he, and he's an old man and that's his... But interestingly, they, in the article, he also, they also quote Sanjeev Bhaskar, who's lovely. He's a, you know Indian actor, comedian. He loves the show. And he mm. says that there is an opportunity to look at it. He said it was being made at a time when he didn't see, and there were two Indian characters in there that he said, and as Sanjeev Bhaskar made the point, it was the first show ever to have genuine, I think it was Hindi or Urdu spoken in a show. So... Right. You know, there are, so you could argue that for and, some and young Indian members of, of, the, of the British population, it might have been a bit of relatability, even in those and characters. And a lot of the soldiers were the buffoons, weren't they? Absolutely. They were the idiots, that's the other yeah. thing. Um, mind your language, love thy neighbour. Mind neighbor. your language. I mean, a lot of these sorts of programmes, my dad was in, 
Mm. You know, and he was an Arab, but well, you could Dexter. play every single nationality. It didn't matter. You didn't have to be the right nationality. Yeah. And in fact, it's funny because your dad, when he comes over and he talks, and and you know when he love, he loses himself in that insane laughter. Yeah. He, it's usually about things like Dad's Army. Oh, they or, watch or, it all day long. Or if all I have to say to your dad to get the hugest laugh is the Madonna with the big boobies, and he's, he, off. he's off. Hello, hello. He's in hysterics, <laughs> but he also was not awake. Yeah. To yeah. it. He he was an immigrant mm. that learnt that you smile and laugh along when somebody makes a joke. And if it hurts, if it stings, you laugh more mm. because you don't want to cause a ripple and you don't want to cause upset. But I, I would think it's not good to move on. I feel think... guilty if I watched any of those now. I wouldn't. No, and I suppose that's the question. Should they be banned? Should they not be shown? Should they or should they be shown with a warning? Or should they be shown? Is there, you know? I mean, should... is it part of our just our history? I don't know. I mean, do we look at it and go, "Wow, we've come so far"? Is there, is there? A... Yeah, maybe it's kind of something that you look at and you do go, "Oh, wow, look how far we've come, and look, look, look where we're at." Um, I'm just looking, trying to find this uh, picture. Gemma Perry. I remember Roy Chubby Brown. He couldn't say stuff now like he used to. Faith Goodman, Talking Pictures TV channel, which we love, puts a warning before the vintage TV shows and films saying they were of a different era, which is the right idea. I, I think well, that's a good go. idea because then you don't have to be mm. insulted. Mm. And, um, you know, for like the elderly people we know, there's a real comfort in that. You're bored all day, like, yeah. you know. Like Pat often says, doesn't she? She likes to watch all her old films and yeah. all of that. And you think, God, imagine if they were all, ta imagine if they were all taken off. Absolutely. Um, anyway. Yeah. But... We're done. Yes. I actually did a pilot for the two people that were Hello Hello writers mm. and Ain't Our Fox, Mum, Jimmy and David Croft, and it was a pilot. It didn't get made. But now, if you look back on it, I was like this sexy nurse. Oh, my God. Well, you could argue by the same standard that you just weren't awake to so, how yeah. you were being portrayed. So if, if that had become a series, yeah, yeah. I'm sure now feminists would be saying to me, how did you do that? Yeah. You know, but I've always been a feminist. Yeah, but, and... And, and I'm still now becoming more and more awake to what yeah. that means. And if you watch last night's home time, you can see her butt. Oh, Mark. In the loft. Love you. All right, guys. Have a lovely day. And we will see you tomorrow.